Your, your pastor is such a blessing to us and his family. And uh, we praise God for allowing us to be here tonight. So we'll move straight into the message. Is it a good time to do that, preacher? Amen. All right, open your Bible, please. Open your Bible, please. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22 and verse number 8. Deuteronomy 22, chapter 22 and verse number 8. And we're going to read that one verse of Scripture. We'll have a word of prayer. Got a couple things to say <laughs> from that Scripture. I believe the Lord's laid on my heart, and I believe it's a message. If, if you allow it to, I believe it'll, I believe it'll be a blessing to you, and it can make a change in our lives tonight. Amen. Amen. That'd be my prayer. All right, let's stand together and read that one verse. It's 22 and 8. Rev, uh, Deuteronomy 22 and verse 8. Thank you. I won't need it. Thank you. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thine house, if any man fall. From thence. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, so much for being our God and our King and our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer. We thank you, God, that we can be in the house of God tonight. I thank you, Lord, for Calvary Baptist Church and what you're doing here. I thank you, God, when we walked in the building, there was an excitement about being in the house of God. And truly, your people were glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord, and we give you glory for that. I need you tonight, Lord. I pray every word I'd preach would please you and honor you. I pray, God, there's not a word that would be spoken except exactly what you'd have said. Lord, we, I pray, God, that you would change us all, help us all to get closer to you. If there's a soul here tonight that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray, God, tonight would be the night that they would meet the King of glory. And the Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, as sincerely as I know how, to send labors into your harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, the Bible says here that when thou buildest a new house, when you're building a new house, that you should, uh, thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof. Now, I don't know if you know what that's all about, but back in that day, and in some t places even today, the roofs are flat. Were they flat in South Africa, preacher? The roofs of the house in our house? In Sri Lanka, they were flat. And I like what the preacher said. I mean, he's right. And those of you who have been out of the country, if you've been any place in the world, you know this is the greatest country in the world. Praise God for that. But in, in Sri Lanka and in many places around the world, the roofs are flat, and you do things on the roof. And if you remember in the Bible, Bathsheba was on the roof bathing, and David went up to his roof. That was common. The, the roof is a common place to do things in, in, in certain parts of the country. You go up there and it's cool or you hang clothes or whatever. I mean, that's just a place. So what I'm trying to tell you is in, in our culture, you don't go up to the roof very often. Amen. You don't just hang out on the roof. Amen. But in, in many cultures around the world, folks hang out on the roof. I mean, that's where, they, that's where they'll hang out during the day or, you know, during the night or whatever. And so these roofs are flat and you're, if you're two or three stories up, you know, you can fall off of that thing and hurt yourself. And so they built a battlement, which would be like just a little wall around the edge of the roof. So think of that, a flat roof, and like a little fence or a wall around the edge of that thing so that nobody can, can accidentally get too close and just kind of fall off. Now, they can jump up on the edge and jump off if they want to, or they can play around on the roof and walk around. You know how, how folks will do crazy things. And, but now here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that thou bring not blood upon thine house. If you don't have a battlement... If you don't have some type of protection on that house and, and when people are on that roof and somebody accidentally, not on purpose, but accidentally falls off, now it says that you don't bring blood on your house. It's not talking about when they, when they hit, you know, it's not talking about that. It's talking about you're guilty. If you don't put up some protection around on, on your roof in your house and if somebody were to fall... And, and to hurt themselves, then, it's, the, then, then you are at least partially guilty when it happens. Now, sir, so first what we're going to look at is, is your house. Now, moms and daddies, you know what your house is, amen. It's your home. It's, 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 and we're not talking about physically here either, amen. We're talking about the, the, your, your responsibility area, the people, the people you're responsible for. So, dad, you're responsible for your wife and you're responsible for your children, and, and many men have other ministries, whether it be Sunday school, choir, whatever, teacher, there are teachers in here, whatever it is, you're responsible to an extent for those children that you minister to. And it could be adults that you minister to, but what I'm trying to say is everybody has a field. Now, young people love this. We got, our, we got a bunch of young field preachers. That's amazing. But anyway, got these young people. You have a sphere of influence. You do. 
you're responsible. Now, it may be just a younger, it may be just your, your sibling, your, your little brother, your little sister. You know, probably, now I've noticed this, when I would go preach in the prisons, and sometimes my, my 12-year-old son would go in there. We're talking about prison. I mean, we're talking about teenage prisoners, but we're talking about 17, 18, 16, and they're in there. If you can imagine it, they're in there for that. So you're talking about hard people, hard. And sometimes I'd bring Nick in there with me. You know, I'm in there preaching, they're listening, but I bring Nick, and he's maybe 10 or 11. And when he'd get up there and preach, man, they were zero. I mean, he's 10 or 11. And these big old boys listen to him preach like he's the only, I mean, like they're just dialed in. And here's the thing. You folks at 16, 15, 14, 13, 17, kids look up to you. In fact, you have more, potentially, more influence on children than even, in many cases, sad to say, but it's true, even their own moms and dads. So what I want you to know is this. This message is for all of us. Every single one of us. All of us have people that are watching us and people that that are, are, I don't want to say dependent necessarily, but I do want to say this, who we influence greatly. You'll never know. Listen, brothers and sisters, you'll never know how, who you're influencing right. and to what extent you're influencing. So obviously, this message is for those in the ministry who have a field, who have people that you're responsible for spiritually. And obviously, this message is for dads, dads and husband, uh, dads, husbands. You're responsible for your wives. You're responsible for children. Children, moms, you're responsible for your children. But all of us, grandchildren, whatever, all of us, all of us have a sphere of influence. I want you to get that. Nobody's exempt from this message. Nobody. If you're saved. Now, if you're not saved, I got a message for you. You must be born again. All right, that's your message tonight, amen? amen. I hope that just hits on you. All night, we'd already sung that song about being born again. But if you're saved, listen, you have, you have a home. And here's what you need to do. You need to put up some battlements yeah. because if you do not... And if somebody falls off or stumbles carelessly around, listen to me, around your house, then you, according to the Bible, are, their blood is on your house. Okay, um, you see that from the scriptures, don't you? Okay, and you see how all that happened physically, but the, spiritually, that's a fact. All of us have a sphere of influence. All of us do. So I'm just going just gonna to hit a, a couple little items here. I want you to turn with me, please, back in Deuteronomy, chapter number 6 and verse 4. Chapter number 6 and verse 4. Yeah. Now, now, you know that the Word of God is quick and powerful. Yeah. And you know the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command these thee this day shall be in thine heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates the word of God is our first battlement yeah. Listen to me, not just for our own lives. The Bible, the Word of God, the truth of God is what is going to change lives. It's what changed your life. It's what changed my life. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You and I, listen, brothers and sisters, here's what I can do. I can go and tell you tonight and say, read the Bible, read the Bible. Make the Bible your life. Make the Bible what you're about. Make your Bible what you're about. But my house whether it be my little sister, whether it be my wife, whether it be my children, whether it be a fellow, my house, the sphere of influence, they need to know that the Bible is an essential, critical element in my life. People need to know that, brothers and sisters. And not because I brought, uh, uh, walk around and thump it in front of their faces, even though, I, you know, if there's a time for that, amen, do it. And not because I wear a lapel pin that says KJV, and if there's a time for that, do it. I'm talking about the Bible is a critical, essential element in what you do. Question. Last time somebody came to you advice, came to you for an opinion, came to you for anything, when's the last time you said, I, you know what? I believe the Bible says something about that. That's 
Or you know what? Yeah. I'm sure the Bible says something. I'm not sure where it is, but let's get in the Bible and figure that out. When's the last time? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The Bible is the battlement. The Bible is what's going to protect us. The Bible will have in their heart and that we're not a sin against him. It's the word of God that's going to change our lives. It's the word of God that's going to protect us from the evil in this world. Brothers and sisters, it's the word of God. And if we are not as established in the Bible, but more important than being established, just making it part of our lives then we are missing the, the opportunity to help others, A, and B, we are living a careless life in front of people and we're not being the, 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 ex, the example we should be in front of people and their blood is on our house. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. All of us, young and old, what part of our life should not the Bible have a part of? What should it not be a part of? And if you know what? I never, 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 ever, Never did I tell my children, never did Jill and I tell our children, you need to read your Bible every day. Never did. Never told them that. You got to read your Bible every day. Now, I probably preached it. They're sitting out there because I preach it all the time. But as a dad, I never said, you need to read your Bible every day. Son, you read your Bible today. Son, you read your Bible today. But here's, what, here's, what, here's what's going to get your children and my children reading their Bible every day. When they get up every single day of their lives and they find you reading your Bible. Yes. Amen. And big brother, big sister, you want your little kid sister, your kid brother yeah. be reading his Bible? You need to make it part of your life. You need to show them that it's part of your life, that it's something you cannot live without of. You've got to live without. You've got to have the Word of God every single day. Amen. You've got to have that. And the Word of God is preached here. It's preached in Sunday school. Your man of God gets up here and preaches on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and he preaches you from out of the Bible. And when we get here and we just... Hey, there's so much good around here, amen. I mean, you got a pastor that's just excited and is, he's a blessing just to be around. I mean, we're preaching. I'd still want to be around where he was, amen. But, but you know what? What you do when you come to church is you say, listen, children, listen, brother, listen, sister, listen, listen, friend, I'm going to be at church on Wednesday night. I'm going to be at church on Sunday night. I'm going to be at church. On, your friend's saying, hey, let's go do this. No, I'm going to be at church. Yeah. Here's what yeah. you're doing. The word of God is essential in my life. Amen. That's a battlement, brothers and yeah. sisters. That's a battlement. You've got to make that Amen. part of your life. You've got to build that up around your house. Dads, if you're not having family, I know you get this preaching. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you for the 4,000th time. If you're not reading your, the Word of God with your family every single day, you must start today. Yeah. You must do that, dads. You've got to gather your children up around you. You don't have to preach them a four-hour sermon, amen. You don't even have to shuck the corn. But just read a verse or two. Get them around you. You don't have to get a pull of... De I'm, I'm not talking about a devotion. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about pulling a devotion out and reading through a devotion. Unless, here's what they need to hear. The Word of God. Get your... Dads, listen to me. If, if one dad... If the whole point of this message, one dad starts having family devotions as a result of this after you've heard it 4,000 times and one more, you're hearing it again. If one dad, it's going to be well worth it. Yeah, get your kids up around you. Get the word of God out. I know they're going to be sleepy, and they may even go to sleep. Read a couple verses. Go around the room and pray. And now let's go to bed. Make that part of your life every single day. Listen, it's a battlement. And when our kids fall... And there's so many dangers out there. And there's so many things for them to get into. Oh, yeah. And there's so many attractions for them to get involved with. Listen to me. If you'll put that battlement up, I'm not saying it's going to protect them. I'm not going to say it will protect them. But I'm not saying that they can't stumble. But I'm telling this. You will have a battlement that will help give them protection yeah. in this rough world. Get that Bible part of your life. Read your, and then read your Bible every single day. Amen. When your kids come to them, get the Word of God. What's the Bible say? I don't know. Pastor, I don't know. If this, this may have happened to me four times, maybe, maybe more than four, maybe ten times. The whole time I was a pastor for ten years, maybe it happened to me ten times where somebody texted me and said, Pastor, do you have any Bible on this? I'm, I'm trying to work something out with so-and-so. With could you give me some scripture on this? I'm talking about somebody just called me and said, could you give me some Bible on this? Then they call for help and this and that. But I'm talking about they're trying to do something. Could you give me some Bible on this? The greatest calls I've ever had. The greatest text I ever had was when somebody's reaching out. You got a man of God. You know what his job is? You know what his job is? You know why he's on this planet? He's on this planet to give you the Bible. You've got a resource here. Anytime, night or day, you could text him, you could call him and say, Pastor, 
I need a verse about this. This is happening in my life. life. Would you help me find some Bible? I need to talk to my whoever. Help me find some Bible. Brothers and sisters, make this Bible part of your life. I'm beating that to death, but I can't, I can't get away from it. Make this Word of God part of your life. It's a battlement. It's a protector. Young people, read your Bible. Every, nothing, if you're saved, nothing will change your life right. like that. Amen. You, Amen. Some of us, we we're, were saved and it took us maybe three or four years before we start reading our Bible every day. Maybe 10, maybe 20, I don't know. But you can, we can all say amen. Nothing will change your life like reading that Bible. Yeah. Every exactly right. single, every single day. And you're going to get so connected to it that one day it's going it's to be a long day and you're going to wake up. It's going like, uh, to be like 11.30 and you're going to go to bed and you had not read your Bible. Somehow or another you missed it. And you're going to wake up the next morning and you're going to say, I forgot, I forgot to read my Bible. And you're going to weep. You're going to weep over that. Not because you're afraid God's going to crush you, but because it's just part of your life. Right. It's a battlement, moms. It's a battlement, dads. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about bust them with it. I'm talking about make it part of your life. Hang it on the wall. What's hanging on your walls? What's hanging, on your, what's hanging on your fridge? What's hanging on the walls? Word of God. Word of God. Word of God. Word of God. That's battlement. And the next thing, the message is over. Aren't you glad? This isn't like a 14-point message. It's just two little things, okay? The Bible. I'm telling you, once you make the Bible part of your life, the rest, it's all going to fall out. I'm telling you. I'd rather, I'd rather, no, I better not say this because I'm not the pastor. Pastors, it's up to him to say, but I tell you what, there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important, nothing in your life, Christian, than reading your Bible. Right. It's a battlement, and it'll protect. And if you're not, start. It's easy. Just start. Every single day. Next thing, and I'm done. That's it, really. It's all in, it's just two. Titus 1 15. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. If, if, if one man, if one dad starts having family devotions and, and, and one person starts reading their Bible every day as a result of this, it was well worth, it was more than well worth the trip. Where'd we, where were we, Jill, before we came up here? Where'd we come from? Do you remember? We were in, anybody ever been to Bristol, Virginia? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey we were in Bristol, Virginia, Sunday. But I'm telling you, well, and it's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful coming up 81? It's beautiful. Even this time of year when it ain't green, it's still beautiful. Anyway, we come up here. If nobody gets anything except one person starts reading their Bible every day and one dad starts having family devotions, oh, it'd be worth a trip from here to Bristol 1,500 times. I mean that. It'll change your life. All right, here's the next one. Titus, and we're finished. Titus chapter, uh, what did I say? One fifteen. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible tells us. Oh, no, this is, this is, uh, boy, this is. Mm. All right, here we go. Under the pure, all things are pure. But under them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and under, and under every good work reprobate. This is what I find. The most dangerous, the most dangerous preaching the most dangerous preaching your kids will ever hear. The most dangerous preaching your friends will ever hear. The most dangerous preaching your little sister will ever hear is the preaching they watch you ignore. Right, right. That's good. That's the most good. dangerous preaching you'll ever hear. See, our kids are old enough and they get it. They get it. They get it. They know what the message is about. They, even tonight, they know. They know. Tell it. And I'm not, tell, I'm, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. Well, I'm saying it because it's true. They know. And they're going to watch you. And it's not happening. Right. Yeah. Right. The most right. dangerous preaching your kids will ever hear is a preaching they watch you ignore. That's now, I'm talking about. Now, I'm, now, now, I'm going to put quotes on Part preaching. I'm going I'm to just put quotes on preaching. I'm talking about somebody that's really preaching the Bible. Yeah. Now, there's some preaching 
that I recommend you ignore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You're exactly right. And you pull your kids aside. I know you did this preaching. You're on deputation. You heard a lot of stuff. I know you did. And you pulled them kids aside and after the meeting and you said, hey, ignore all that. <laughs> you know what I'm telling you. You know what I'm telling you. But that's not where you are. You know, Come on. You have got. Now, I'm not talking about be perfect. I'm not talking about be perfect. I'm talking about ignoring the Word of God. You know what? One of the most powerful things you could do is, is, is when, when the preacher preaches something and you know you're messing it up and your kids know it too, pull them around you when you get home. Say, I'm talking about your little eight year old and your 14 year old. Say, pray for dad. Yeah. You know what the preacher preached today? I got. That's, that's good. me. Good. That's me, son. Go ahead. Go ahead. And a preacher may be preaching on love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave yourself for it. And say, you know, I know I'm, 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 uh, go tell your wife, honey, I know. I know I'm a grumpy bear. I mean to you. I know that. Honey, I, I just want you to know what he preached today is right. And I'm going to try to do that. Amen. But don't ignore the truth. And when people around us see us striving to do it right, it's a battlement. And when they see us ignoring it, do you see how horrible? Isn't that horrible? They profess that they know God. But in works, they deny Him. Right, right. And it's abominable. And it hurts people around us. We are godly. I'm, I'm, brothers and sisters, Jill and I, one time... I preached this message, not this one, but a message about, look, I'm your pastor. If you need help, come talk to me. And this lady comes and she was just crying. And she said, you know what? My daddy was a, was a, was a Christian, quote, unquote. And I, I decided if Christian means being like him, if Christian means being like him, I'd rather go to hell. Tell him. Tell him. I'm telling Tell you, him. brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about being perfect. But we need to get honest with where we are with the Bible. Right. And we hear the preaching on the things that, oh, I, whatever the sin is, and all of us struggle with something. And then, and then our, our 10-year-old's brother watches us get involved as a 16-year-old with the very things the pastor been pounding in our heads week after week after week, and we just say, leave me alone. That's not your business. Right. You're killing them. At least be honest and say, you know what? I don't love God enough to even try. That's good. That's good. But, but, but listen, but he is right. Yeah, yeah. He is right. As opposed to saying, oh, that ain't nothing. You know, I learned a long time ago, you don't have to listen to all that preaching. You don't have to, you don't have to do that. I've, I found out years ago from mommy and daddy, you just pick what you want and do it. Don't, you don't have to do it all. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that's how we, that's how we destroy yes. people's lives. Yes. Now, I want you to get this, and I'm wrapping it up. I am done. Because I want you to know something. We are all sinners saved by grace. Right. And can I, get you, can I go a step further? You know what God's doing in our lives, don't you? He's conforming us to the image of his dear son. Right. You know what that means? Ain't none of us there yet. Right. Right. None of us. Now, now listen to me carefully. None of us are where we need to be. Right, right. None of us are. All of us are dealing with something. All of us are dealing with something. We don't have to be perfect, but we have to handle correctly and truthfully about where we are right. as we strive for perfection. Now, you may be 20 years along this thing, and here's what I found. I don't know if this is right or not, but this has been my experience. Back in the early days when it was just about stopping tobacco and getting my hair cut right, that was easy. Right. Yeah. I mean, back in those days when it was just about the outside, that stuff was easy. Yes, sir. But when God started working on my thought life uh -huh. now you're on it. and my attitude yes, life, sir. I'm ahead. just telling you, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that don't you wish it was as easy as back when it was just about getting a haircut? Don't you wish that? So here's what I want you to know. All of us are dealing with something. Right. 
And, one day, and the more we deal with, the more we are like Paul and say, oh, wretched man that I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't you yes, ever sir. think, don't you ever think that any of us think we're perfect. We're all dealing with something. But let's be honest about it. Let's be honest about it. And get closer to Jesus. There are two battlements I mentioned to you tonight. Number one is make that word of God part of your life. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you make that word of God part of your life, and it will change your life. You make that word of God part of your life. And people will see it, and they'll know it. You'll be like Miss Pickney I used to work with down in South Carolina. Miss Pickney, her, every time she ever said anything, she said, you know the Bible says, you know the Bible says, you know the Bible says, why not? Make the word of God part of your life, number one. And number two, be honest about the word of God and what it's doing in your life. Dads and moms, big brothers, big sisters, be honest about this thing. Don't live a hypocritical life. Don't do that. I didn't say perfect. I said hypocritical. Right. Yeah. You know the crowd Jesus got in their face more than anybody. You serpents! Don't, because it hurts people. And you put those fences up. We're praying. Lord, we love you so much. You are a great and mighty God, and we thank you for that. Lord, I... I praise you. Uh, I just praise you for your word and I praise you for the battlements. I praise you, God, for allowing us to, to have an influence. But at the same time, Lord, what a responsibility. What a responsibility.